Well, it's great to be back with you, church. And before I jump in too far, I want to point out, if you haven't gotten a Christmas or Advent survival kit yet for you and your family, make sure you reach out to the church office and get a hold of us. There's a lot of great activities as a family to be doing, some Christmas stories to read, lots of cool stuff, so you don't want to miss out on that. As a church, we've been trying to wrestle with different ideas for the Advent season. And, and as we get to that season, I think we use the word Advent and Christmas interchangeably, like we, we know that's what it's talking about. The word Advent actually refers to an arrival. Now, obviously, the arrival we talk about in the Christmas season is Jesus and the fact that he was born physically during this season. But there, there are certain traditions as a church that we often have mixed in with the Advent, and one of those being the lighting of candles. And some of you may have remembered in the past, I know TFBC has done that and, and during the service had a different time where we talked about what each candle represented. And so we may not be doing that in our in-person services, but what we're looking at doing is talking through that in some weekly devotionals and what each of those candles represent, because we do recognize how important it is to see the different sides of the Christmas story and, and recognize how important each part of it is. And so as we get to week one, which is where we're at now, week one is represented by the candle of hope, is what we often call it. And, and really with this candle, what's interesting is we often point more to the Old Testament. And the reason for that is God had told his people and, and prophets for such a long time about this Messiah that would come, this, this person that would come. And it, it was meant to give them hope that this, there is, it's not going to be like this forever. There will be a Messiah that will come and what he will do will drastically change things. And that got them excited. And this last Sunday we talked about how the Jewish people may, may have had a wrong idea about what the Messiah would truly be like. But what Jesus came to do should absolutely give us hope. I, I hope that your family has some time to open up God's word as we go through these devotionals. And, and the passage I want you to look at is John chapter 1. And in John 1, there's a lot of different important passages there and important verses, but I want to focus on verse 9, where it says, The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was created through him, and yet the world did not recognize him. He came to his own people, and his own people did not receive him, but to all who did receive him, he gave them the right to be children of God, to those who believe in his name, who are born not of natural descent, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. The reason we can have hope during this season, regardless of how crazy things look, is because we have our relationship with God restored because of what Jesus eventually came to do. The fact that he was born, but he didn't stay a baby. He grew up to be a man. He lived the perfect life and then died on a cross in our place so that we might have that relationship with God restored. That gives us the ultimate hope. And so as we live out in the, in the crazy time, may, may we carry that hope with us. May people see that hope in us and may they want to experience the same joy and peace that comes from that hope that we can have. We'll see you again next week.